We haven't built a skyscraper in this city since I think 1998. But look at the things that are being built in the city. I mean, it's, it, it's neighborhood projects, it's condominiums, it's, uh, it's residential areas around like the brewery district and the arena district. We see, you know, quite a few condo projects still being built. Um, the lifestyle annex in the River South district is near completion. The um, neighborhood launch project on Gay Street is still moving along with their construction. So things like that. Um, the, the Columbus Commons project where the city center mall has been torn down uh, to create temporary park space and then kind of set the stage there for more development in the future. I, I think a lot of those things, while they may not be that exciting today, uh, you know, they really kind of set a precedent for, you know, what, what we can expect over the next few years. Being part of of change, of, of uh, the downtown coming back to life, being part of um, you know, it's, it's fun, uh, the corner that, or the street that Dirty Franks is on was kind of a quiet corner. And when I drive by at 10 o'clock at night and I see people outside, you know, people walking around, I get really excited. And I grew up in a time where, where neighborhoods were strong, where neighbors were strong, uh, where there were thriving small businesses, uh, where people bought and sold right in their own communities. They didn't have to go across town to get high quality uh, garments or a high quality anything. I mean, they, they actually could get that quality right there in their neighborhoods. Uh, if you want people to, to live downtown, you know, they're going to have to be able to you know, buy their groceries and, and get their haircuts and, uh, and uh, you know, go to a hardware store. I mean, we, we still need those things. As we start to develop those, uh, the downtown becomes a very, very livable, habitable place. I never felt like this before. I like some of the housing that's downtown, and so, um, you know, that brings with it grocery stores and people. I think more retail is going to have to come back to the downtown area. That's what people think about when they think about uh, a downtown in a major city. So where's the shopping down there? And so I, I think that, that retail is, is going to, to have to come back. Downtown is changing now for the, for the better. Uh, we are getting new investment. We have the South of Mile being constructed right now. Uh, we have condos and apartments being located downtown and, and, and new 5,000 new ones just in the past couple, couple, three, four, or five years. I hope in 2015 there's actual affordable housing downtown. Uh, when I was looking for condos, uh, I looked in the arena district and the cheapest one I could find was $398,000. 700 square foot one bedroom. Are you out of your mind? Well, why not let people who work for the state be able to live downtown? You know, have condos, some relatively nice ones for $150,000. What would be wrong with this novel idea? I would love to see a lot more density. Uh, I'm very, very uh, interested in downtown Columbus. I really, I want to see uh, Columbus grow up. It would be kind of cool to see as they develop the, the uh, river in downtown with the side of mile and, and all those sorts of things, to have, have some kind of entertainment district down there. And, uh, you know, maybe have that be a destination for people not only here, but, you know, from out of town who want to come in just to, just to hang out. I'd love to see more development around our waterfront. I'd love to see uh, a lot more retail downtown. So I see a continuation of a, of a vibrant downtown. So name a community in America that uh, is a world-class community that doesn't have a thriving downtown. I see thriving suburbs. So name a community in America that's a thriving community that doesn't have thriving suburban communities uh, as well. The suburbs uh, uh, immediately surrounding the city uh, could emerge more as their own kind of urban hubs, uh, miniature Columbuses, as it were, uh, so that you'll live and work in Dublin uh, more so than we do today. The real impact, though, I think, has to do on those, those, those ring cities, Lancasters and Marysvilles, where uh, you, you, you work there and you'll live there and there'll be the kind of amenities that you'll expect. I mean, there are restaurants, for instance, opening up uh, in, in, in Marysville that I wouldn't have expected to see. And that's clearly the impact of, of, of Scotts and, and Honda and, and, and people moving to the region to work for those companies. So that's, uh, that's a future I see for, for those outlying regions, that they'll become their own sort of mini destination places. Lancaster already has that feel, I think. I think you're going to see a lot of development along uh, 315 here as uh, 
Certainly the university's research park starts to take root. Uh, there's development already occurring down in Grandview Yard. It's going to move north. I think you're going to see a lot of new companies emerging, companies that have grown up here as well as companies that have been attracted to this region because of the talent and the, the technology and the resources that we have. I think you're going to see the whole north outer belt uh, just full of tech companies. So you're going to see Dublin, which has already made a huge investment and is pushing hard for, uh, for business technology growth across to Delaware, the Polaris area, certainly over to New Albany. So as we look to 2015, we're excited about the future. We don't fear the future, we embrace it because we know it's going to be even better for this region. Get up and just show. People don't work, you know, eight to five lives. They want, uh, they want a, a city that never really sleeps. You have to have a 24-hour city. And we, I believe, we're one of the few cities in the United States that has a short north a German village, an Old Town East. So, so I think one of the priorities going to 2015 is the continued livability, growth, enhancement of downtown to make it a, a 24 hour city as opposed to just a nine to five business workplace. I, I think anyone who um, remembers downtown the way it used to be, and I, I talk to a lot of people who you know, look three, four decades back at, you know, the, the thriving downtown energy and they compare today, you know, is, is to kind of be missing, you know, a lot of that energy. Um, you know, you, you have to realize that it, downtown got to where it is today over a 40 year decline. So to kind of rebuild it and move it back in that direction is going to take some time. So I think uh, you've got to kind of be willing to invest in the city for the long haul and, and be a part of the kind of the, the rising wave of action. Well, hopefully it's a better community. I think there's uh, more partnership in the community and common vision of Columbus being not just a good city, but really a great one. Uh, and I think you see that institutionally in many of the leaders. Uh, like good isn't good enough. We really want to be better or be great. I think there's a, a willingness to partner and cooperate. Uh, you know, across businesses, across business and uh, private sector, public sector, clearly government. Uh, I think there's just a different spirit of, uh, of doing good and collaboration. And, and the neat thing about Central Ohio is this, is that uh, no one else can determine our future but ourselves. You know, we don't have to depend on somebody else to say, hey, we need you to whatever to fix our future. We have the opportunity to determine that. The, the, the nice thing that I think about us and I'm talking about Ohio State, I'm talking about Columbus, I'm talking about the wider Ohio community. I think that we are in a position where we can control our own destiny more than being controlled. And I think we need to take that responsibility. I, I think that we should not wait for the good things to come. I think we need to make things happen. I think we need to have a sense of uh, ability, urgency, and opportunity. And we need to move aggressively on those fronts. And, uh, and if we do, I think that um, I think that we're in a very powerful position that few people can claim.